Hello, it's Metacosis Perfectionellus, and this is my chemistry quick review playlist. Let's talk about the four quantum numbers today. In the last videos in this series, we talked about the periodic table, periodic trends, electron shells, subshells, and orbitals. Do not forget that each orbital can carry a maximum number of two electrons with opposite spin. You can call it up versus down clockwise versus counterclockwise, positive spin versus negative spin, positive half versus negative half. Let's get started. Please watch the videos in this chemistry quick review playlist in order, especially the video on electron configuration. Do you remember Pauli's exclusion principle? What did Pauli say? No two electrons can occupy the same four quantum numbers. Just like there are no two persons who live in the same country live in the same state, on the same street, and carry the same name. But how about my neighbor? Yes, your neighbor lives on the same street, in the same state, in the same country, however, does not share your full name. So, just like you, you live in a country, in a state, on a street, and you have a name. The four quantum numbers are the principal quantum number, the angular momentum quantum number, magnetic quantum number, and the spin quantum number. Symbols, the principal quantum number is n, that's the shell number as we have discussed before. The angular momentum quantum number is the L, lowercase l, for the subshell. How about magnetic quantum number? Magnetic sub L. And this L is what? It's the angular momentum quantum number. How about the spin? It's m sub s. You can think of it as magnetic spin. What's the principal quantum number? It's the n. It's the number of the shell. Here's the first, the second, and the third shell. And this is called what? Principal quantum number. Here's the first shell. Here's the second shell. Principal quantum number, one. Principal quantum number is two. Principal quantum number here is 1. Principal quantum number here is 2. Why? Because all of these elements have 2 shells of electrons. How about here? 3 shells of electrons. So the principal quantum number is 3. The principal quantum number is 4 because we have 4 electron shells, etc, etc, etc. Remember that elements are made of molecules, each molecule is made of atoms, and the atom has nucleus centrally and electrons peripherally. The electrons peripherally are organized in shells or orbits, followed by subshells or suborbits, and then orbitals. And each orbital can carry a maximum number of two electrons with opposite spin. Let's talk about shells. Here's the first shell, n equals 1. Second shell, n equals 2. Third shell, n equals 3. What's the maximum number of electrons allowed in each shell? It's from the formula 2 n raised to the second power. So if n equals 1, the maximum number of electrons is 2. If n equals 2, the maximum number of electrons is 8. But if n equals 3, then the maximum number of electrons allowed is 18. Please pause and review. 2n squared gives you the number of electrons allowed per shell. But what if I want the number of orbitals in each shell? Since each orbital carries a maximum of 2 electrons, just erase the 2. So the maximum number of orbitals per shell is n squared. So in the first shell, how many orbitals do I have? 2 orbitals. How about in the second shell? You have 2 power 2, which means 4 orbitals, and each one of these orbitals can carry a maximum number of 2 electrons, so 2 times 4 is 8. How about in the third shell? 3 raised to the second power is 9 orbitals, each one carries 2 electrons, equals 18 electrons. Let's talk about the subshells or suborbits. The S subshell only has one orbit. The P subshell, three orbitals. How about D subshell, five orbitals? And the F subshell, seven orbitals. And we talked about this table before. The S subshell, maximum number of one orbital. Each orbital has a maximum number of two electrons possible, so it is one orbital and two electrons. The P subshell, three orbitals, maximum number of six electrons, three times two. How about D? We have five orbitals, maximum, 
5 times 2 is 10. How about the F subshell? 7 orbitals, each one carries 2 electrons. 7 times 2 is 14 maximum. G does not exist, but just imagine. If it comes after F, look at the pattern. I'm adding 2 orbitals, so it's going to have 9 orbitals. Each orbital carries a maximum number of 2 electrons. 9 times 2 is 18. There is also a pattern here. We keep adding 4. In the first period of the periodic table, you only have one shell, which means the maximum number of electrons allowed is two. But the maximum number of orbitals is one, because it's just n squared. I have one orbital carrying two electrons. What's the name of the subshell there? I only have the S subshell. In the second shell, I have the S subshell and the P subshell. The S subshell has one orbital and the P subshell has three orbitals. The S subshell is gonna carry two electrons maximum and the P electron is gonna carry six electrons maximum. Two plus six equals eight maximum number of electrons in the second shell. Next, third shell. Shell number three has three subshells, the S, the P, and the D. The S has one orbital, the P has three orbital, the D has five orbitals. One plus three plus five is none orbitals. Each one can carry a maximum number of two electrons. Nine times two is 18, and so on and so forth. Shell number four has four subshells. S subshell, P subshell, D subshell, F subshell. S subshell has one orbital, P subshell, three orbitals, D subshell, five orbitals, F subshell, seven orbitals. I'm adding two each time. One plus three plus five plus seven is 16 orbitals. Each one can carry two electrons. 16 times two is 32. You get the idea. Electron configuration order 1s and then 2s and then 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, then all the way to 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s. You get the point. Why are we going this way? Because we gotta fill the low energy first and then you go to the high energy subshells. So what are the four quantum numbers? The principal quantum number, the angular momentum quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, and the spin quantum number. Symbols N, L, M sub L, and M sub S. What are the possibilities for the principal quantum number? Well, you're either the first shell, the second shell, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, or seven. Only seven possibilities. As for the angular momentum quantum number, L always equals N minus one. So in the first shell, L equals 1 minus 1 is 0. In the second shell, L equals 2 minus 1 is 1. In the third shell, L is 2. In the fourth shell, L equals 3, etc., etc. So in the second shell, I will have L equals 1 and everything before me, which means L equals 0. So I have both of them. In the third shell, L equals 2. So I have L equals 2 and L equals 1 and L equals 0. I take all of them. But the maximum number always equals N minus 1. Why do we need the principal quantum number? What does it tell us? It tells us about the energy and the size of the shell. Thank you. How about the angular momentum quantum number? It tells you about the subshell, not the shell. The subshell energy and the shape of the orbital. In the S subshell, L equals 0. In the P subshell, L equals 1. In the D subshell, L equals 2. And when you see that L equals 3, you know that we're talking about the F subshell. Just say F me three times. Magnetic quantum number, M sub L, possibilities. The lowest number is negative L. So if L equals 1, then I'm the negative 1. If L equals 3, then the lowest possibility is negative 3. How about the highest possibility? Positive 3. What if L equals 4? What's the lowest possibility? Negative 4. How about the highest possibility? Positive 4. What is the magnetic quantum number telling us about? The orbital orientation, i.e. the number of the orbitals and their orientation in a subshell. There are negative orientations and positive orientations. Last, spin quantum number, that's the fourth quantum number. The symbol is M sub S. Positive half spin or negative half spin? Clockwise spin versus counterclockwise spin. We only have two possibilities of spin. Positive half or negative half? Only two possibilities, yes. That's why the maximum number of electrons per orbital is 
two. One is gonna spin positive half, the other is gonna spin negative half. Only two possibilities, meaning only two electrons possible. Think of a keyboard in front of you that only contains numbers. And I told you that you're only allowed to touch the keyboard twice. How many digits are you going to enter? Answer, two. If the shell number is n, then the maximum number of orbitals in that shell is n raised to the second power. And since each orbital carries a maximum number of two electrons, therefore the maximum number of electrons in a shell is 2n squared. Here is the hardest part of the lecture. If you can understand this, you'll be in a good shape. When n equals 1, l equals n minus 1, which means L is 0. Whenever L is 0, which subshell are we talking about? The S subshell. Because the S subshell has the angular momentum of 0, the P subshell has the angular momentum of 1, the D subshell, angular momentum of 2, the F subshell, F me 3 times, L equals 3. So when L equals 0, I know that we're talking about the S subshell. How many orbitals exist in the S subshell? Only one orbital. And when L equals 0, M sub L also equals 0. Only one possibility here. Okie dokie. So here is 1s. The 1s orbital has two electrons maximum, which means the first shell has two electrons maximum capacity. Look at the rule. When n equals 1, when we're talking about the first shell, what's the maximum number of orbitals? n squared, which means 1 orbital, maximum. And this orbital can carry a maximum number of 2 electrons. Bingo. Now let's talk about the second shell. The second shell, well, I also have the s subshell, which means l equals 0, la yada yada yada, everything similar to what we have discussed. And... Uh, I also have the P subshell, and the P subshell has L equals 1, because 2 minus 1 is 1. This lovely P subshell has how many orbitals? 3 orbitals, carrying 6 electrons maximum. If you have 3 orbitals, then you have 3 magnetic quantum numbers. So the M sub L could be negative L, i.e. negative 1, and 0, all the way up to positive one. So only three possibilities for the magnetic quantum number. Here is a possibility, a possibility, and a possibility. Each orbital carries a maximum of two electrons, meaning six electrons total. Now let's review the second shell. When n equals two, what's the maximum number of orbitals? n squared is four. Where are these four orbitals? We have one orbital here in the s subshell and three orbitals here in the p subshell. So the total number is four orbitals. Total number of electrons allowed. 2n squared equals 8 electrons, as you see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Bingo. How about the third shell? Well, 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 I'm going to include L equals 0 because I have the S subshell, and this is called 3S. And I also have 3P subshell, so everything is similar to here. And I also have the 3D subshell. When n equals 3, what's the maximum L possible? 3 minus 1 is 2. Whenever L equals 2, which subshell are we talking about? The D subshell. The D subshell has how many orbitals? 5 orbitals, which means we have 5 magnetic quantum numbers. The lowest one has to equal negative n, i.e. negative 2, and the highest number has to equal positive L, i.e. positive 2. And since I have 5 orbitals, I need 5 magnetic quantum numbers. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2. I have 5 orbitals in the D subshell, and each orbital carries a maximum number of 2 electrons, meaning 10 electrons total. So let's review the third shell. When the shell number is 3, what's the maximum number of orbitals? 3 squared is 9. Here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 orbitals. How many electrons maximum? 2 times 9 is 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 electrons. What are the four quantum numbers again? Here's the principal quantum number. Here is the angular momentum quantum number. Here is the magnetic quantum number and the spin quantum number. As always, you can download these doozy notes on my website, metacosisperfectionalis.com. Let's answer the question of the previous video. Electron configuration for the following atoms, please pause and answer this yourself. 
There you go. Remember the mnemonic. S, S, PES, PES, DPS, DPS, F, DPS. Let's go. Sulfur. How many electrons? 16. That's the atomic number. So therefore, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. After S, S, P, what do I get? I get the S. So 3S2 and then 3P4. Let's count the total. 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10. Plus 2 is 12. Plus 4 is 16. Bingo. And then chlorine. Similar, but instead of 3P4, we have 3P5. Which means the P subshell in the third shell carries 5 electrons. How about argon? Oh, look at this. We are full. Oh, satisfied? Yes, indeed. That's my octet rule. 2 plus 6 is 8 electrons in the third shell. Potassium. Well, I have filled 3P. What's after? 3p please answer 4s so 4s1 and calcium will be 4s2 let's try the configuration of sodium in many shapes if you go by the shells then we have 11 electrons two in the first eight in the second shell and one electron in the third shell total is 11 electrons if you want to go sub shells 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 and the total number of electrons here is 11 notice the opposite spin it has to be opposite a more abbreviated way to write the electron configuration of sodium by subshells is to realize that this 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10 electrons that's neon right here oh neon yeah so neon and 3s1 can we do the same thing for potassium absolutely 19 electrons so two in the first shell 8 in the second shell, this is 10 in total, and 9 in the third shell. How about by subshell? 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1. And there you go, or abbreviated argon, which is 18 electrons, and add the 19th electron at 3s1. Quiz time! Suppose that I'm talking about a mysterious element, let's call it element X has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. The question is, what element is it? You can use your periodic table as a guide. Let me know your answer in the comments. You'll find the answer key in the next video, which will talk about molecules, compounds, bonds, and chemical equations, including how to balance a chemical equation. If you find my videos helpful, please consider buying me a coffee by clicking on the link in the description. You can also buy my notes on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. I can personally tutor you if you need help so that you can pass your exam. Smash like, hit the subscribe button, click the bell, and click the join button. Choose the highest tier to gain access to more than 300 premium videos right now. You can support the channel here or here. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.